Es una sociología.
الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن لا أشهد أن محمد رسول الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله حيا على الصلاة حيا على الصلاة حيا على الفلاح حيا
الله أكبر الله أكبر أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله حيا على الصلاة حيا على الصلاة حيا على الفلاح حيا على الفلاح الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعين به ونستهديه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور نفوسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا إنه من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له الأحد الصمد الفرد الذي لم يلد ولم يولد ولم يكن له كفوا أحد وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله وصفيه من خلقه وحبيبه أشهد بأنه قد بلغ الرسالة وأدى الأمانة ونصح للأمة وكشف الله عز وجل به الغمة وجاهد في سبيل ربه حتى أتاه اليقين اللهم فصل وسلم عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه وعلى أنصاره وأحبابه وعلى جميع من استنى بسنته واهتدى بهديه وسار على نهجه إلى يوم الدين عباد الله فإني أوصيكم ونفسي أولا بتقوى الله امتثالا لقول الله عز وجل يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته 
ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون ألا خير الكلام كلام الله وأحسن الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار إنه من أطاع الله ورسوله فقد رشد واهتدى ومن يعصي الله ورسوله فقد ضل وغوى نسأل الله رب العرش العظيم أن يجعلني وإياكم جميعا لما يحبه ويرضاه والعمل لما فيه خير وصلاح للإسلام والمسلمين رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل العقدة من لساني يبقه قولي ثم أما بعد My dear respected brothers and sisters in Islam uh, perhaps this could be my farewell khutbah in MCMC as I am leaving New Jersey for good. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make this move a source of khair and barakah for me and my family. Please remember me in your du'as and forgive me any shortcomings and mistakes that I ever did. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to keep you happy, healthy, safe and sound. I have to testify to the fact that during the past 13 years, this community gave me an overwhelming sincere love, respect, dignity and honor. And may Allah reward you. All the people associated with MCMC especially two types of people. One, all the school parents and my beloved beautiful children, both from the school and from MCMC. I got their love, I did what I could as a father and I'm satisfied in my heart that I was able to move their lives. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept their effort. As I'm leaving for good, through this khutbah, I'm going to give you a message. And I hope that you will take this message to those who you know, to your immediate families, and especially if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you with children, share this message. We are in a special time now. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has had mercy on us. The COVID disaster is decreasing. And we hope that good days are to come. Insha'Allah ta'ala. This is a season of where we are looking forward to have Hajj and Eid al-Abha. So now, we need to set some targets. And there could be no good target for me and for you is to try to go to the excellence of our akhlaq and character. So that this community of MCMC will be known by people who say what they do and who do what they say. This makes people combine Iman, which is inside. And as a result of good Iman, the actions that come out of a person through his speech, action, dealings, treatment, relationships, conduct should reflect that sincere Iman. In this life to move forward, Everyone needs a model. And please give me your good attention because it's a message. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala identified two beautiful models for me and for you. And because you are parents, so you are murabis for your children. And I'm talking to the sisters in the back as well. First is the personality of the season. Our beloved Sayyidina Ibrahim, alayhim salam. We remember him when we celebrate Eid. 
and we remember him when he do Hajj. But Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says, "Qad kanat lakum uswatun hasanatun fi Ibrahim." Indeed, there is a good role model for you in Ibrahim. How can I know that role model? I have to learn about him, his qualifications, his characteristics, his habits, very especially his conduct, his character qualities, so that we can follow his legacy. Not by chats, not by words, but by being good role model, first with, to our families, to our children, and to the community at large. And the second role model is for the rest of the time. Sayyidina Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Surah Al Ahzab. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, in Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, you have a beautiful example. You have to learn. Our problem is, a lot of problems we face only because we do not mention these role models. We do not talk about them. So I encourage you all, as I leave this community, to learn about those models so that we can learn because I follow, if I follow these models, my children, my wife, my families will look at me and they will find me as a role model for them. They will not have to wander around searching for basketballers, actors, heroes as role model. Why we follow role model? Because we love them. And we love Sayyidina Ibrahim and we love Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. My message to you from this Eid, let's change the page and try to reach to the level of Ihsan or excellence in character in one area today. There are many, many areas, but I will focus one. And that is al ihsan fil kalam. When we talk, conversation. The way we talk, the way we speak to our families, to our children, to our mashayikh, to our imams, all these beautiful community members. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says something beautiful. Not as an option, but as a command. And when you speak to people, say something good always. And you go to that level of excellence. Oh, you who fear Allah, or oh, you who believe fear Allah, and say something which is upright, something which is forthright. Something which is balanced and fair. Because conversation reflect me, who am I? Iman inside, akhlaq as a layer outside. And we will be loved and respected only with the way we conduct ourselves. And the most beautiful way to conduct is to change the style of our talking. And let me tell you something more beautiful. Every time we say something good, Behind the scenes, something happens. That some, that something good, a good word, a good speech, a good conversation, a good address. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says, "This is al kalimu tayyib." This is a good speech. Every single time, a good speech comes out of my mouth, your mouth too. What happens? It ascends to Allah. Surah Al-Ahzab. Surah Fatih. Ilayhi yasa'adu karimu tayyib. To Allah ascends the good speech. And that's not the only thing. Wal'amalu salihu yarfa'u. And if we back it up, 
by doing righteous deeds, it helps that good speech raise is more higher. So we need to be mindful and teach our children. Aisha radiallahu anha informs us that our role model, Sayyidina Rasulullah sallallahu she says, كَانَ كَلَامُ رَسُولِ اللَّهِ سَلَمْ كَلَامًا فَصْلًا Rasulullah's speech was simple, easy. Every word is separate. يَفْحَمُهُ كُلُّ مَنْ سَمِعَ Everyone who hears him understood him. No difficult, no vague speech, but love with smile with politeness, with courtesy and respect to the one we are talking to. She also says, Rasulullah won't use to speak like you people speak, like we speak. Instead, instead he speaks a, a speech in between there is appropriate gap not too fast, not too food, not too difficult, not too vague. Clarity. Whoever is in his company, he memorizes what he says. Al Hussein, the grandson of Rasulullah, he asked his brother Hassan. Then I asked my father, Ali ibn Abi Talib, Oh, my father, tell us how Rasulullah used to conduct himself when he was in a gathering. So he listed a few simple characteristics of Rasulullah We are in a gathering as well. Every single Friday in the Salah time, where there are many, many people. In the second khutbah, I will brief those five, six. Aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah wa lakum wa astaghfiruhu innahu huwa rasulullah. Bismillah. Alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah. وعلى آله وصحبه ومن ولا. So Ali ibn Abi Talib told his son Hussein, "You ask me something beautiful. I am going to teach you how Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam conducted himself when he is in a gathering. Something beautiful." He said, "Number one, كان رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم دائما البشر." He's always smiling. We don't. We're frowning sometimes. We're angry. We lose temper. We lose control over emotions and feelings. We criticize. We embarrass people for no reasons. When smile comes in, anger goes away. Shaitan goes away. Sahl al Khalq. He was well mannered. Remember the combination between Iman and Akhlaq? If Iman is good, Akhlaq is the outer layer. Me and you should be the best one. Because we follow the best one. Sayyidina Rasulullah. Allah told him, Oh Muhammad, you are the highest level of Akhlaq. So we should be bottom? No, we should follow him. Layin al Janib. He was easy going. Everyone, everyone can access to him. Everyone can speak. No barriers. Right? Laysa bi fazdin wala ghaliz. He was not harsh by heart. Wala ghaliz. He was not rude by tongue. Beautiful, right? So sometimes we keep things in our heart. 
and we're so harsh and we give things for ages those grudges and masteries take this out this aid oh Allah help me I'll be a changed person say Amin Rasulullah Anas ibn Malik says Rasulullah was not fahish neither he was mutafahish fahish is a person who speaks obscene language shameless words and mutafahish one the one who does not entertain he never spoke he never entertained he never listened because that does not make sense so if we love rasulullah if you love Sayyidina Ibrahim and we want to follow our legacy, if this is his legacy, then we have nothing to do with all these obscenities. He was never being loud. He speaks with respect. Sayyidina Luqman السلام, told his son, Tarbiya, Tarbiya, you are Murabbin. Your job is to raise your kids from your homes to be symbols of modesty, akhlaq, character. So that after we leave this world, at least I raise my child so that he can make dua for me. People will remember me when they look at my child. This is how we raise. Wala fahashim. He wasn't وسلم, obscene. He never talked something bad, nasty, joking around, you know, making fools, uh, foolish language or something. Wala ayyabin. He وسلم, was not ayyab. Ayyab is the one who always finds faults with others. We cover faults. We don't make faults open. Let's turn the page and impress our own children, our own fellows and friends. I love Rasulullah. I love Sayyidina Ibrahim. And last but not least, in the gathering, there are other people too. When he speaks, People showed so much adab to him that their necks were down and they were so quiet, so attentive, looking at him. It looks like birds sitting on their head. Teach your children that adab to you, to their mom, to the Imam. To the elderly when they come to the masjid i do not have any hesitation to say if allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave you beautiful children they are your children they're my children if they do good i am ready to take the credit but if they aren't doing good there is no one who's going to take the blame except me and you because they are my children, your children, they're not Imam's children. And that but not least, he never interrupted anyone while he is talking. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help us become more polite, more loving, more respectful. Talk with smile and respect. Choose the right words when we speak. O Allah, give us the good listening skills. We listen first, then we speak. And O Allah, finally, make us away and away from insulting people, from making fun of them, from ridiculing or mocking them. Self-respect, love and honor. O Allah, make us among those who give respect and get respect. O oh Allah, make us follow among those who follow the legacy of these two models, 
Sayyidina Rasulullah Sallam and Sayyidina Ibrahim so that and I conclude when we die what's our goal? Sayyidina Ibrahim told his children a wasiyah an advice so is Sayyidina Yaqub what was that advice? this advice is for me and you while we live in this country and we raise children. He said, Ya Baniya, O my children. So what to Bakar? Inna Allah astafa alakum deen. Allah has chosen one deen, Islam for you. Fala tamutunna. Don't die. Unless you do enough efforts. Fala tamutunna illa wa antum muslimun. Die as a Muslim. Can you protect your deen? Safeguard your Islamic identity. Die as a proud Muslim. And finally, Rasulullah Sallallahu said that when the son of Adam dies, everyone dies, all actions are discontinued. Three things will continue. Even after, me and you will be in the grave. Sadaqatun Jariyah. A sadaqah that we give in our lifetime. Ilmun yuntafa'u bihi or a knowledge that we left behind. We taught someone. We wrote books. We gave lectures. We spread the ilm. Others will get benefit. And last but not least, and this is where I conclude this khutbah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect you. He said, Awwaladun salihun yad'ula. And when you leave this world, leave behind a righteous child. Who can pray for you? Allahumma inni da'in fa'aminu. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Ali Muhammad. Kama salli ala Ibrahim wa ala Ali Ibrahim. Inna ka ahmidun majid. Allahumma salli alayhi fil awalin wa salli alayhi fil akhirin. Wa salli alayhi fil malayi al-a'la ila yawm al-deen. Rabbana atina fi dunya hasana hu fi al-akhirati hasana tan wa qina azab al-nar. Wa adkhilna al-jannat ma'ala abraad. Ya azizu ya wafar. Inna Allah ya amuru bil adli wa al-asani wa yitahi fil quba. Wa yanaha anil fahshai wal munkari wal baghi. يعزكم لعلكم تذكرون وأقم الصلاة الله أكبر الله أكبر أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله حي على الصلاة حي على الفلاح قد قامت الصلاة قد قامت الصلاة الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله الله أكبر الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين يا أيها الذين آمنوا لا تكونوا كالذين آذوا موسى فبرأه الله مما قالوا وكان عند الله وجيها 
يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما إنا عرضنا الأمانة على السماوات والأرض والجبال فأبين أن يحملنها وأشفقن منها وحملها الإنسان إنه كان ظلوما جهولا ليعذب الله المنافقين والمنافقات والمشركين والمشركات ويتوب الله على المؤمنين والمؤمنات وكان الله غفورا رحيما سمع الله لمن حمده الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين قد أفلح من تزكى وذكر اسم ربه فصلى بل تؤثرون الحياة الدنيا والآخرة خير وأبقى إن هذا لفي الصحف الأولى صحف إبراهيم وموسى الله أكبر سمع الله لمن حمده الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر السلام عليكم ورحمة الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله
السلام عليكم الله اكبر الله اكبر الله اكبر الله اكبر اشهد ان لا اله الا الله اشهد ان لا اله الا الله اشهد ان محمد اشهد ان محمد رسول الله اي الصلاه اي الصلاه اي الفلا الله اكبر الله اكبر لا اله الا الله ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا وسيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين وسلم تسليما كثيرا أما بعد Believing brothers and sisters I urge you and myself to inculcate the taqwa the consciousness of Allah obedience to him fear of him of his punishment Taqwa is the way to success. Now the Hijjah, the month of the Hajj, will be starting uh, in another nine or ten days. But I don't want to wait until next week to talk about it. Uh, there are some things I want to remind you and myself of concerning the month so that we can start preparing for it. For, for those things. Uh, in Sahih al-Bukhari, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, that is, uh, Bukhari narrates his hadith uh, in his Sahih, in which the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, مَا الْعَمَلُ فِي أَيَّامٍ أَفْضَلَ مِنْهَا فِي هَذِهِ قَالُوا وَلَا الْجِهَادِ قَالَ وَلَا الْجِهَادِ إلا رجل خرج يخاطر بنفسه وماله فلم يرجع بشيء. The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said that no deeds, no good deeds in any days, any days of the year are better than those that are done in these ten days. And he is speaking about the first ten days of the Hijjah. These are the days in which the deeds that you do are the best, are most rewarding for you. And the Sahaba, there are some of them who said, uh, uh, not even jihad, that is in other days, because they know jihad to be one of the highest of the virtuous acts. And the Prophet wasallam said, not even jihad, unless a man goes out putting himself in 
uh, and his property in danger for Allah's sake and does not return with anything. In other words, he achieves a shahada or martyrdom in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So uh, this hadith is very clear that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has provided these 10 days, the first 10 days of the hijjah in which uh, your deeds, uh, your good deeds, uh, and make sure that you don't do any bad deeds, but your good deeds, whatever good deeds you do during this time, uh, they are tremendously rewarded by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as He will reward in no other time. It is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala deci who decides what times are the most auspicious times, uh, what are the best deeds, and also what are the best places for you to do good deeds and be rewarded tremendously. Because there are some places, if you do good deeds in them, much better, much more rewarding than if you were to do those same deeds uh, in other places. And similarly with time also, there are certain times, certain days, in which if you do good deeds, uh, much better, much greater rewards for you. And if you do those same deeds in any other time in the year. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given these first days of the hijjah uh, that you know special thing about them and not no other days of the year are you know so auspicious as these days now of course uh, what are the days now we'll think about it what are the good days that we should be doing during this time as I said, it's coming up, uh, not immediate, but for, um, saying these things so we can think of them and decide what we want to do for ourselves. There are some of them that we cannot do because of the circumstances, such as the Hajj. The Hajj is one of the best acts that can be done in those 10 days. Because the Hajj starts on the 8th of the Hijjah and ends on the 10th. 8th, 9th and 10th, those are the days of the Hajj. Uh, we do not have the opportunity to do that this year. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that that declaration should be made make the declaration of Hajj, call them all to Hajj, and they will come to you on all, every kind of transportation. Uh, and from all parts of the world, they will come. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Man falam yarfuth. Uh, uh, if a man make if a person any person makes Hajj for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he does not commit any indecent act, he does not commit any wrongdoing there, then he returns from that Hajj uh, as the day his mother gave birth to him, that is pure, absolute, no sin uh, recorded uh, against him. Uh, Another good act that we can do during that time, and of course we have the opportunity to do that here. Not only the Hajjaj will do that when uh, over there, but also we have the opportunity to do it, and that is the Takbirat, Takbir. And the Takbir is from the beginning of uh, Dhul Hijjah all the way, not just uh, to the tenth, but even beyond the tenth. Uh, in the Quran we find in Surah Al-Hajj, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, uh, after saying that, make the proclamation for the Hajj and people will come to you. Uh, they will come to witness benefits for themselves. And he says, And remember Allah, and they will remember Allah, the name of Allah in well known days. In well-known days, uh, and in Sahih al-Bukhari, again we have a hadith from Abdullah ibn Abbas, radiyallahu anhu, in which he says uh, that al-ayamul ma'duda, al-ayamul ma'lumat. These well-known days are the first ten days of the Hijjah. So from one day one of the Hijjah to day ten, which is the day of the sacrifice. All of these days are ayyamun ma'lumat, the well-known days. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives the command to 
mention his name during these days. And what does that mean? To say the takbirat. Allahu Akbar, Allah. Just even if you just say that alone, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. But we know that uh, the takbirat of the Eid, you can say the whole thing if you wish, any any time during those days. You know, just spontaneously you say it. Uh, there are no specific times for you to say it du during that time. So as long as long as you remember, as soon as you remember, say it. Allahu Akbar. And say it aloud, don't say it just within yourself. Say, say Allahu Akbar. Some of the Sahaba would even go when they are in Mina, they would go to the marketplace and they will start to say Allahu Akbar. And uh, others will join with them and, and say it also. Uh, and there's another thing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in Surah Al Baqarah. وَذْكُرُ اللَّهَ فِي أَيَّامٍ مَعْدُودَاتٍ Ayyamim ma'dudat. One is ma'lumat. Ayyamim ma'lumat. And this one is fi ayyamim ma'dudat. Uh, in specifically counted days, in the days that are counted. You remember Allah, meaning that you glorify Allah, you say the takbirat and so on. And uh, Abdullah ibn Abbas, in the same hadith, he says that the uh, ayyam al ma'dudat refers to the day, days after the tenth. The, the three days after the tenth, when the Hujjaj, they have completed all the rites of the Hajj and so on, but they have to remain in Mina, and all they do is to make dua, glorify Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and so on. Uh, and this is something that we can do also. Again, there's no specific time to do that. Uh, but there are the, um, the, the, the those takbirat that are confined to specific times, that is after the Salah from the day of Eid, or actually from Yom Arafah, and going onwards uh, all of these days, and saying the takbirat after the, uh, after the uh, salawat. Uh, <clears throat> so that is something that starts in the first 10 days and continues. Fasting, and especially on the day of Arafah, Yom Arafah, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Sayamu Yaumi Arafa Ahtasibu ala Allahi and Yukafira Sanata Alati Kabulahu was Sanata Alati Bada. This is in Sahih Muslim uh, fasting on the day of Arafa. I hope from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that that will expiate for the entire year before it. And for the coming year also. So just imagine fasting on one day of the year. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made it so special that it will expiate, it will wipe out your sins for the coming year as well as for the past year. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala enable us to achieve that. Sacrifice, which is something the, the you know the sacrifice of that occasion starts on the day of sacrifice, Yawm al Nahr. And what, what day is that? That is Yawm al Eid, right? the day of Eid, the 10th of the Al Hijjah. Uh, and it continues for those other three days after them also. Any of those days you can sacrifice. And there are rules and regulations, uh, so, such as uh, not if you have the intention to sacrifice an animal, you do not uh, clip your nails or cut your hair for the entire time. So one needs to prepare oneself before the day itself, before the hijjah starts. If you hear, we're not talking about the hujjaj, the hujjaj, uh, the rules for them is different. But those who are not on the hajj and they intend to make a sacrifice, they should not cut any of their hair from any, from any part of their body or clip their nails, their fingernails or toenails. Uh, um, so prepare your, yourself so that you're not in a, a very uncomfortable position if your hair grows too long or your nails grow too long and so on. You can cut them just before uh, the, the first of the hijjah. So you don't have too long a wait in order to cut them again. And then you cut them after you sacrifice the animal uh, and maybe after you have a taste of the animal, you you taste something, so, some cooked part of the animal. Uh, 
so there are these rules that one needs to be aware of and one needs to uh, go into the month and knowing them and, uh, and putting them into effect. So if you have not done a sacrifice as yet and you have the means to do that, you know, in the past years, if you did not do it, now you have the means uh, to do it, uh, then make those preparations so that when the force of the hijja comes, you are already, you know, you already have the intention of prepare, uh, of sl slaughtering an animal. You know, maybe you have already have that animal. Possibly, you can wait. The, you, you can uh, get the animal during that time, uh, and you prepare yourself bodily and spiritually and so on for for that deed. And when you are sacrificing, take your kids uh, to to watch the sacrifice, and maybe they can help in doing some some of the things there, right? Um, maybe helping to skin the animal or something else. Uh, this is uh, something that many many Muslims have abandoned, have uh, forgotten. You know, we are so busy these days. We have the animal to sacrifice. Maybe we just go there on the day after the after Salat al Eid. We sacrifice the animal quickly, and then we are gone again. Uh, we are go maybe gone back to our work, or, or or just gone to distribute the animal and so on. But involve your kids. Uh, so that they can know that this is a day of Eid and these are the things that we are supposed to be doing these are the things that are pleasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, so read up more about it there, there, there are lots of things to say about this matter if you are making a sacrifice so read up more about it from the books of fiqh and other explanations that the scholars give uh, to see you know, how important and, and how beautiful it, it is when you're obeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in these special ways, you know, it is uh, such a beautiful thing and involve your kids. Uh, and sadaqah, you, you give sadaqah during the, la the first uh, 10 days of the month, uh, um, uh, whatever and how much you can and to whoever you can and so on. You know, all of these are various good deeds. So the Prophet, the hadith of the Prophet said him that there are no, no deeds have the rewards as the, the, your good deeds have during these 10 months, uh, 10 days rather. And so just remember that. Uh, even if it's a small, a small thing that you do, a small uh, sadaqa that you give or something like that, uh, it will be tremendously rewarded much more than if you had done the same act at any other time. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala enable us to observe uh, these days uh, when they come upon us. Aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum wa li sa'ir al-muslimina fa astaghfiruhu innahu huwa al-ghafur al-rahim. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. وأفضل الصلاة وأتم التسليم على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين أما بعد فاتقوا الله عباد الله حق التقوى I once again remind you and myself to inculcate taqwa uh, in the truest uh, sense of the word among the good deeds that one can do in fact, one should be doing during the first 10 days of Dhul Hijjah is dua. And of course, dua is something that you can do uh, and should be doing at all times. So it's one of those good acts, good deeds that you should do. And your rewards for just making the duas will multiply tremendously during these days. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala emphasizes us, uh, and calls on us to make dua to him. And uh, in the hadith we find that also. A dua huwa al-ibada. Dua is in fact worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So it's an act of worship but one that you can do at any time. Under any circumstance. Uh, ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for your needs. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Khayru du'a'i du'a'u yawm arafah. The best du'a is the du'a on yawm arafah, on the day of arafah. 
the night of Dhul Hijjah. Wa khayru ma kultu ana wa nabiyuna min qabli la ilaha illa Allah wahdahu la sharika lah lahul mulku wa lahul hamd wa huwa ala kulli shay'in qadir. And the best dua that is, the best dua that I ha and the prophets before me have said is la ilaha illa Allah wahdahu la sharika lah lahul mulk wa lahul hamd if you do not know this uh, already then you should uh, go to the sources go to the books and so on uh, identify the dua go to the books of dua the you know compilations of dua and so on and very likely they will have this dua in it uh, it's uh, really a phrase of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so it's a uh, dhikr one of the azkar that we should be saying uh, but the Prophet ﷺ mentions it as a dua that we should be saying during this time, during the 10 days. So learn this dua and make sure that you say it, you implement it. Every, any and every time you remember during the 10 days, the first 10 days of the Hijjah. So, uh, and as he said, this is the best dua that anyone can make. And this is the best thing that I and the prophets before me, all of them, used to say. So, you know, following the example of the Prophet wasallam, among other good deeds that we can do, reciting Quran, learning, studying, memorizing Quran, uh, learning more and more about the deen, acquiring knowledge of the deen, kindness to parents, kindness to relatives, and joining the good and forbidding the wrong, uh, doing uh, askar, any and all of the askar that you can remember you know, throughout the day, there are different askar, different du'as and so on, saying them, the adab, observing the various adab that we find in the sunnah of the Prophet wasallam, adab concerning how we interact with each other and other matters, like when we are leaving the home, when we are coming back into the home, uh, when we are going to, to relieve ourselves and, we'll, uh, and when we leave that place and so on and so forth. So many things. Any and all good deeds can and should be done, no matter how small they are, because all of them will be, the reward for them will be so much. We don't know. You know that may be the thing that will help us to be in Jannah, inshallah. And also I remind you to make dua for the oppressed Muslims uh, throughout the world, whether it's in Palestine or Kashmir or wherever. And also, they do, uh, to make a dua today, today, you know, there's a, a time on Friday when your dua is, would most likely be answered. So make that dua, and many of the scholars say it is after Asr, between Asr and Maghrib, the last time of the day. So when you go home or wherever you happen to be, remember you pray Salat al Asr, and then after that make any dua. Uh, and especially to ask for the oppressed Muslims throughout the world and ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for relief from, for them and for us all uh, and enable us all to see Islam rising once again. Allahumma la tahrimna bi dhunubina fadl al-ayyam al-ashr. Allahumma wafiqna fiha lil-amal al-salih. Allahumma ansur ikhwanan al-muslimi al-mustadha'afina fi kulli makan. وَاجْعَلْ لَهُمْ مِمَّا هُمْ فِيهِ مَخْرَجَا اللهم انصرهم وثبت أقدامهم اللهم اجعلنا هداة مهديين غير ضالين ولا مضلين ونسألك العفو والعافية في الدنيا والآخرة ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وكنا عذاب النار سبحان ربك رب العزة عما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين أقيم الصلاة الله أكبر الله أكبر أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله هيا للصلاة هيا للفلاة قد قامت الصلاة قد قامت الصلاة الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله
الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين إهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين إذا جاء نصر الله والفتح ورأيت الناس يدخلون في دين الله أفواجا فسبح بحمد ربك واستغفره إنه كان توابا الله أكبر سمع الله لمن حمده الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين إهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين قل هو الله أحد الله الصمد لم يلد ولم يولد ولم يكن له كفوا أحد الله أكبر سمع الله لمن حمده الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر السلام عليكم ورحمة الله 
السلام عليكم ورحمة
السلام علیکم و رحمۃ اللہ وبرکاتہ اشحد اللہ اللہ اشحد اللہ اللہ اشحد ان محمد رسول اللہ اشحد ان محمد رسول اللہ حی علیہ السلام حی علیہ السلام حی علیہ الفلاح حی علیہ الفلاح اللہ اکبر اللہ اکبر لا الہ الا اللہ ان الحمد للہ نحمد و نستعین و نستغفر و نؤمن به و نتوکل علیہ و نعوذ باللہ من شرور انفسنا و من سیعت عمالنا من يهده اللہ فلا مضل له و من يضلل فلا هادی له و اشهد ان لا الہ الا اللہ وحده لا شریک له و اشهد ان محمدا عبده و رسوله یا ایوہ الذین آمنوا اتقوا اللہ حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا و انتم مسلمون قال اللہ تعالی في القرآن الكریم بعد اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم تبارك الذي بیده الملک وهو على كل شيء قدیر اما بعد رب شرح لی صدری و یسر لی امری وحل اللقدتا من لسانی یفقه قولی آمین یا رب العالمین Usman radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he was, as we all know, the third khalifa in Islam. And of course, a very, very pious person. Some of the sahabas, they noticed something peculiar about Uthman. And they went up to him and they asked this. They asked him, like, this one thing that we notice about you, whenever you were in gatherings and there is a mention of, you know, hellfire or jahannam, uh, you, we don't see you get like very emotional. You, we don't see your face change. However, whenever we go to the cemetery, whenever we bury a loved one, and whenever we see you just looking at the grave, you completely change. You start crying. And why is that? And Uthman radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he said, why wouldn't I be like this? For the first stop, for a believer or for any person after this life is at the grave. And he said that if your affairs in the grave are good, inshallah, your affairs on the day of judgment will be good. SubhanAllah, this was the amount of reflection Uthman radiallahu ta'ala anhu used to do when he would visit the cemetery. And this is a simple question to ask myself and we should all ask ourselves. You know, how often do we even visit the cemetery? And even when we do, of course we go there to remember our loved ones, but does it really shake us? Does it really make us think that we'll be, end we'll be ending up there shortly? In fact, nobody knows when. Are we reflecting on the grave? And are we thinking about the question and answers and punishment in the grave? Now in this regard, Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he taught us something really beautiful. He said that in the Holy Quran, there is a surah. 
There is a surah that contains 30 ayahs. And if you recite this surah every single night before you go to sleep, inshallah you will be protected from the test of the grave. And of course, I'm sure many of us know which surah I'm talking about. This surah is chapter number 67. It's called it's Surah Mulk. It's a, it's a very common surah that is, alhamdulillah, read very, very commonly, especially in the, in the subcontinent. There's this awareness about this surah. In fact, there are many other hadiths that talk about this surah as well. The Prophet ﷺ said that if a believer recites the surah regularly, this surah will intercede on his behalf on the Day of Judgment. So no doubt this surah is, you know, of course the entire Qur'an is blessed. But when Rasulullah pointed out certain surahs, that means they have that extra blessing that we should try to get. And so one should obviously make this habit. You know, Ramadan seems like it's a long gone distant memory. But of course one of the remnants of Ramadan is our connection with the Qur'an. And it's been more than a month since Ramadan is over, but we should... Again, ask ourselves, how much Qur'an are we reciting on a regular day? And so I encourage myself, I encourage all of you to recite Surah Mulk. Even if Shaitan makes you think, oh, who's going to recite all this Surah, right? Even if you recite three ayahs, start with something, get into the habit of reciting every single night. But of course, simple recitation, I mean, inshallah, you'll get the reward for it. But as believers, our job is to not just recite, but reflect on the meanings. Read the meanings, read the tafsir and reflect on it. And so today I wish to share, you know, if time permits, maybe one or two reflections from Surah Mulk. So one beautiful reflection comes from the second ayah in Surah Mulk. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, الَّذِي خَلَقَ الْمَوْتَ وَالْحَيَاةَ لِيَبْلُوَكُمْ أَيُّكُمْ أَحْسَنُ amala. Beautiful ayah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says that he has created death and he has created life. And he has created these two things. He has basically created existence because of one reason. And that reason is he wants to test all of us who will do. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala very carefully chose his words. He said, Ahsanu amala. He has created, he has to test people who will do the the best deeds. And the scholars have pointed out that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not use the word akhtaru amala, which means quantity, which means the number of deeds. Rather, the emphasis is ahsanu amala, the quality of deeds. And the scholars, again, they point out something really beautiful. Like if you look at the Quran, you know, whenever the day of judgment is mentioned and the deeds are mentioned, you hear this concept of weighing the deeds, right? The scales, whose scales are heavy, he will be in Jannah. He will be, he will be in a state of pleasure. So there's this concept of heavy and light, not necessarily counting the deeds. And so, so if we continue to reflect on this, we should think to ourselves, Think about the Day of Judgment. Think about being in the grave. Are there some deeds that we have done that will save us on the Day of Judgment? Can we think, can we look back in our lives? And can we see, okay, what have we done for the sake of Allah? That we can look back not to show off to other people, but to actually reflect on within ourselves. Is there something that we have done that we can go on the Day of Judgment and say to Allah, this is what I did, and inshallah, it's, it's very weighty. Something for all of us to think about. In this regard, there's a beautiful hadith, and inshallah with this, we'll, we'll end. This hadith is Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa he narrates that there were three people who were traveling, who were walking by, and suddenly it started to rain a lot. And so the Prophet ﷺ said, what did they do? They took refuge in a cave. So when they took refuge in a cave, they were waiting for the rain to calm down. And then suddenly there's this big boulder of a rock 
that fell and it completely covered the entrance of the rave, uh, cave. So now all three men, they are stuck in the grave. They are completely stuck in the grave. There is no way out, complete darkness. And in this situation, there's literally nothing they can do. But what can they do? They can make dua to Allah. So the three of them, they said, let's take turns and make dua to Allah. And the way they said they will make dua to Allah, you know, when you are in a really desperate need, scholars have mentioned, and this is what we've taught from tradition, that you can make dua to Allah by using something known as tawassul. For those of us who don't know what tawassul means, it means that you can make dua to Allah and you can mention a deed that you have done for the sake of Allah. And you can say, oh Allah, I did this deed for you and you alone. And if you, have, if you accept this deed of mine, give me what I want. So this is literally what these three people did. What did the first person do? What was his dua? And the reason I'm mentioning this hadith is again to tie back to the concept of ahsan wa'amala, the quality of these. We should all try to strive to look back into our lives and see if we have done these kind of weighty deeds in our lives. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us all the tawfiq to do so. So what are those deeds? The first person, he said, Oh Allah, you know that you know I am of simple means. Every single day I go and I work and then I bring home some milk for my family. And his parents used to live with him. And so he said, oh Allah, you know that whenever I would go home, before my kids, I would always feed my parents. I would always offer the milk to my parents first. And then this person said, but Allah, one day, and this is literally the, you know, sometimes we don't realize dua is like a conversation with Allah. It's not, oh Allah, give me this, Allah, give me this, Allah. You're literally talking to Allah. So this person said, oh Allah, one day, I went home and I found my parents sleeping. I found my parents sleeping. And so I was thinking, what should I do? It is a habit of mine, I want to give, I want to feed my parents first. And his kids were crying and they were hungry. But this man said, no, I waited all, pretty much all night, I waited for my parents to wake up. And when they woke up, I gave them milk first and then I fed my kids. And then he said, oh Allah, if you know that I did this only for your sake, then please move this rock away. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He accepted that dua and the rock moved a little bit. Subhanallah. Brothers and sisters, when we think about quality of good deeds, the number one thing on our list should be good character with our parents. Number one thing should be good character on our parents. And we should think about ways how, by which we can serve our parents they can be, they are, in fact, our key to Jannah. And so may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us all the tawfiq to practice good akhlaq with our parents. Amin. The second person, subhanAllah, very interesting story. The second person, he really desired his, his a relative, a relative of his. He thought this girl in his family, she was extremely beautiful and he really, really desired her. Now in terms of marriage, he wanted to commit zina with her. And so this girl was in a difficult situation once and she needed money. And this person saw this as an opportunity. So he offered her money in return for zina. And so she agreed because of her circumstances. And so subhanAllah, when these two got together to commit the act of zina, right before he was about to commit the act of zina, this girl said, do not do so, except in a halal way. And so at that moment, this person stopped. He said, I fear Allah. And he said, I'm not going to commit zina. And he said, the money I gave you, you can keep that money also. And he went away. And he said, oh Allah, if you know that I did, I did, I did not do this or I stopped myself only for your sake, remove the rock. 
and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala removed the rod. Now this again makes us think. Sometimes we think about Ahsan wa Amala, quality of deeds, we think about doing good deeds. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He loves it when we stay away from bad deeds as well. When we stay away from bad deeds. Brothers and sisters, we are all severely tested. Living, you know, living here, there are so many opportunities to commit zina. And I'm not even talking about the actual act of zina. We all know the amount of filth that is present online and how easy it is to commit zina. But remember this hadith. Remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is Rafur Rahim. And if you struggle with something like this, you know, think about this hadith. You, one who lowers his gaze in fear of Allah, Allah will, will fill his heart with Iman. And so if we are tested with this, remember this hadith and how staying away from such a thing, inshallah, will be a weighty deed. Something really, really weighty in the sight of Allah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us all the tawfiq to stay away completely from zina. Amin. And then last but not least, the third person. What did, how did he make dua? You know, some of us, we are tested with relationships. Sometimes we're not able to do proper, uh, adopt proper akhlaq with our parents. Some people, we're all tested with lowering our gaze and the opposite gender. And many of us, we are tested with money. We are tested with money. And so the third person, he was a businessman. And he had hired some people to do some work for him. And so when he hired these people, he finished their work, it was time to give out their wages. So he started paying everybody. And there was this one person who was missing. And he couldn't find that person. So let's say he owed him maybe $500 or dinars or whatever. But he couldn't find that person. So he went, wanted to really give it to him, but that person never showed up. So what did he do? He invested that money. And you know, sometimes your investment really pays off. Let's say you bought Bitcoin 10 years ago for $500. It might have be, it might have be like millions of dollars today. I don't know. Right? So that's what happened with this guy. He, that little money that he did not pay the labor with, he invested it and that just grew and grew and grew. And then many years later, this, that person who he owed that money, he came back. And he said, I'm here, remember you owed me some money, I'm here to take it now. So you know what this brother did? Not only did he give the principal all the profit that he made, all the money that it grew into, he gave all of that to this person. And this person was, are you mocking me? He's like, no, this is a result of your weight. Take all of it. And then he said to Allah, oh Allah, if you know that I did this only for your sake, please move this rock. And then the rock completely moved and these people were able to get out of the cave. Again, subhanAllah, it, it's a big reminder for all of us. Money is such a big test for us. We will do whatever it takes to get $100 from here, $200 here, taxes, this, that, because we love money. Money is so sweet. Let's try to reflect on this and try to be as honest as God. And of course, I'm not trying to pass out a thick, uh, you know, thing that is, you take somebody's money, you invest it, you have to give it back. All and any financial transactions, I encourage and remind myself and I encourage all of you, consult with knowledgeable people before you take any decisions. But this is just a general point that how, you know, ref, uh, refraining ourselves from wrong wealth, it's a, a deed that is so weighty. And going back to the whole point of the grave where we, we started with, you know, how Uthman radiallahu ta'ala anhu he used to cry when visiting the grave. Well, subhanAllah, you know, 40% of the questions in the grave are about money. Right? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Prophet taught us that one of some of the questions we're going to be asked is how did you earn your money and how did you spend it? So money is a very significant part of our questions in the grave. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us all the tawfiq to be like Uthman radiallahu ta'ala anhu that whenever that we continuously do deep reflection on the grave, we visit the cemetery often and we reflect on the punishment, on the test of the grave. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us all the tawfiq to recite Surah Mulk, which the Prophet taught us. If you recite it regularly, you will be protected.
from the trials of the grave. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us all the tawfiq to not just recite Surah Mulk, but reflect on the meanings. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the tawfiq that every single night when we go to bed, we ask ourselves this one question, this one reflection. Is there one deed that we can go to with on the day of judgment to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with this one deed and we feel that this deed will be something that will save us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us all the tawfiq to do our deeds with ihsan. Aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum wa li sa'il al-muslimin fa astaghfiruhu innahu huwa al-wafur rahim Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen, was salatu was salam ala rasulihi al kareem amma ba'd. All praises due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And may the peace and blessings of Allah be upon the Holy Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Just a couple more points about this concept of ihsan with deeds. Couple things. One thing we should always remember the two conditions for any deed to be accepted are number one, Especially when we're doing, you know, deeds in terms of worshiping Allah, like directly, it has to be according to the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So we should strive to learn how Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam did his deeds, and we should try to do it accordingly. And the second most important condition is that the deeds have to be sincerely for Allah subhanahu wa taala. And sincerity or ikhlas is something that is some is extremely difficult to achieve it takes a life long it's a lifelong journey lifelong process to achieve that and so i'll just leave you all with one tip and f reminder to myself and to all of us you know a lot of people they ask and one time we were with well, i was in a class and i asked this a scholar like okay how how do you develop sincerity and so he gave this very very important point he said one of the best ways to develop sincerity is to at least have some deeds that you do in complete privacy. There is absolutely nobody who knows about that deed except you and Allah. Even if you can hide it from your own spouse, you hide it from your spouse. Completely and totally between you and Allah. And the reason is because, you know, a lot of things that we do, it's in public. Even if you want to try to, like, help somebody. Of course, then you're helping somebody, you, the person you're helping, he knows, right? It's very, very difficult. And in fact, there's another good student of knowledge, he mentioned this, that, you know, his teachers taught him, never ever expect a reward for deeds that are done openly. Why? Because when you do deeds openly, they can, there's always the chance that they are tainted with Rhea showing off. And so, of course, we cannot completely stop doing deeds openly. There's, we live, we're social people, we do that. But let's, if you try to want to try to build sincerity, try your best to find certain deeds, maybe certain donations, maybe certain, you know, recitation, your certain nuffle prayers, whatever it is, something that you can do in privacy that nobody knows about. And this would require a lot of reflection and so, a time, but inshallah, I'm sure all of us can think of something like that. that and inshallah, that one simple thing can be very, very weighty in the eyes of Allah. Think about Bilal radiallahu ta'ala anhu. When the Prophet sallallahu went up to the Isra al Mi'raj, he heard the footsteps. He heard footsteps and he, he was told these are the footsteps of Bilal. When he asked Bilal, what is it that you do? That I heard your footsteps in Jannah. He said very simple, he always likes to be in a state of wudu, and when he does wudu, he prays two rakah prayer, that's it. Because of this simple deed of being in the state of wudu all the time, his footsteps were heard in Jannah, subhanAllah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us all the tawfiq to think of some small, sincere, consistent deeds that we can do for the rest of our lives. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us all the tawfiq to recite Surah Mulk regularly every single night, and make us of the people of Surah Mulk we on make of the make us of the people who for whom the surah mulk will intercede on the day of judgment ameen inna allaha wa malaikatahu yusalluna ala an-nabi 
يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد اللهم بارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار ربنا لا تزغ قلوبنا بعد إذ هديتنا وهب لنا من لدنك رحمة إنك أنت الوهاب ربنا هب لنا من أزواجنا وذرياتنا قرة أعين واجعلنا للمتقين إماما إن الله يأمركم بالعدل وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعيذكم لعلكم تذكرون أذكروا الله يذكركم ودعوه يستجب لكم ولا ذكر الله أكبر والله يعلم ما تصنعون واقيم الصلاة الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله هيا للسلا هيا للسلا هيا للفلا هيا للفلا قد قامت السلا قد قامت السلا الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله Still, 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 please make your line straight. Allah, <laughs> الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين تبارك الذي بيده الملك وهو على كل شيء قدير الذي خلق الموت والحياة ليبلوكم أيكم أحسن عملا وهو العزيز الغفور الذي خلق سبع سماوات طباقا ما ترى في خلق الرحمن من تفاوت فارجع البصر هل ترى من فطور ثم ارجع البصر قرتين ينقلب إليك البصر خاسئا خاسئا وهو حصير الله سمي الله لمن حمده الله الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين 
إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين إهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين القارعة ما القارعة وما أدراك ما القارعة يوم يكون الناس كالفراش المبثوث وتكون الجبال كالعهن المنفوش فأما من ثقلت موازينه فهو في عيشة راضية وأما من خفت موازينه فأمه هاوية وما أدراك ما هي نار حامية الله أكبر سمي الله لمن حمد الله الله أكبر الله الله أكبر السلام عليكم ورحمة الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله
Mm-hmm. 